Today on Muscle Car, the guys team up with Chip Foose to customize a 2010 Mustang with a new paint scheme, body kit, exhaust, and more. It's phase one of a project you could end up winning. Hey, welcome to Muscle Car. Now, a lot of different rides have been defined as muscle cars, and some, like the AMX, were only around for a few years. Now, others, like the Camaro and the Challenger, well, they're enjoying a modern-day revival. But there's one that's been flexing its muscle for a solid 45 years, the Mustang. To celebrate this milestone, Ford is introducing its newly redesigned model for 2010. Magnaflow has donated this fresh-off-the-line Mustang to Muscle Car. It's a stock GT, so it's no slouch, but we've got a few ideas to give this thing some more attitude. Straight off the showroom floor, it's rated at 315 horsepower. When you control those horses with the third pedal, it's that much more fun. The braking is downright impressive, even in stock trim. And with a flick of a switch, <laughs> the only traction control here is in your right foot. But stock's not what we're about here. Nah, we got some plans for this thing. And the best part, we're giving it away when we're done. That's right, one of you guys is gonna be driving this 2010 Mustang. A lot of automotive legends have stopped by to pay us a visit here at the Power Block, but not one of them has had time to just hang around and help us out. Now, we really wanted to transform this thing into a one-of-a-kind ride, so we invited back one of our favorite guests. Now, this guy is known for his unique designs, and he's gonna help us transform this bone stock GT in a muscle car's Magnaflow Mustang, Chip Foose. How, How you doing? doing? Great Good. to see you. Thanks for showing Good up. Good to see you. Thank you very much. So what's your vision for this thing? Well, I know that, uh, you know, first of all, I'm excited that we're going to be one of the first groups to get to customize the new 2010 Mustang. That's very cool. But it is going to be the Magnaflow Mustang, and their colors are black, yellow, and red. So i got to get to a drawing table, figure out exactly what we're going to do, and we're going to end up painting the whole car. Yeah, and that's what, man. We'll get you set up. <laughs> <laughs> With a few supplies, some good reference shots, and the car parked 10 feet away, yes. Chip gets to work on his preliminary sketches. He starts with a series of freehand line drawings. These allow him to get the right angle and proportions for the final sketch. Each new drawing builds on the last and gets him closer to the vision that's in his head. Let's do that one. It's pretty cool. And Once the proportions are correct, he fills in the details and starts adding some color. This process takes at least four hours when dealing with a stock car, but can take a whole lot longer when you throw in custom body mods or if he's dealing with a one-off project. Ooh, that's beautiful. Thank you. You've done this before? Yes, I have, but never on a 2010 Mustang. You know, I want to thank Ford Motor Company for donating the car to the project. Absolutely, man. Give us a fun project to play with. Well, hey, while you've been hard at work over here, me and Tommy, we've been knocking parts off that thing left and right. So <laughs> I think we ought to put some more on. Absolutely. Hey, stick around, because right after the break, we're going to start mounting up some new parts. Get another look at that thing. I like it. Coming up, we're adding some pipes to this pony, and Chip works on his lines. Hey, we're back. We've been pulling parts off this thing for hours, and I'm about ready to put something back on it. Chip, looks like Magnaflow has hooked us up. What do we got? Yeah, this is Magnaflow's competition series. It's a true stainless steel, two and a half inch cap back system designed just for the 2010 Mustang. Should bolt right on, give us a nice aggressive sound. Good deal. I bet it helps us out in the performance area. Yeah, from the cap back and the true X pipe, it's gonna give us probably a gain of about 18 horsepower and 23 foot pounds of torque. Good deal, let's get it on. Good. This kid is a prototype for the 2010 Mustang, and Magna Flow nailed it. 
everything fell into place just like Henry designed it himself. Man, you wasn't kidding about this thing just being a bolt on. I told you. You gotta hear it. Well, if you'd hurry up, we could hear it. You gotta get it on the ground and get it sanded first. That's right. We pulled an all-nighter last night and got this whole car wet sanded and prepped. We're just about ready to roll it into the booth. Actually, before we roll in the booth, I'd like to get all the graphics laid out so I can step back and take a look at it. Because when you're in the booth, you can't get away from it. Works for me. Great. Just like with any other all-over paint job, we can't do anything until we get it all masked up. Now, anybody that's familiar with Mustangs knows that Jack Roush makes a pretty cool aftermarket kit that he bolts onto the Mustangs. Now, we were privy to uh, actually knowing that he already produced a 2010 Mustang set, and we actually got a set for this car. Now, one of the things that uh, I looked at when we looked at the rear wing and this little tail, and we're bringing this graphic that comes back, I wanted to trim that off. So I've already done it on the other side, and what you'll see is when you line those up, the other side will lay nice and flat, and we won't have the tail dropping down. It's a pretty cool part, just making a slight alter change, and uh, Jack, hope you're not upset, but I think it's gonna look pretty cool. When laying out graphics, the first step is to find the center line. This is the most critical step when laying out stripes. Once you have the center line established, you can build off of it to get the width that you want. Now remember, when you're laying out graphics, if it looks right, it is right. Tape is easier to remove than paint, so take your time and make sure you're happy with the layout before you grab your gun. With the layout finished, it's off to the races. Good. Don't go anywhere. There's more of the Magnafofus Mustang coming up. During the break, we finished covering up what needs to stay gray and got it wiped down to prep it for color. Custom paint is exactly that, custom. So not much comes straight out of the can. Well, that's what I'm thinking is just spray this so it's just a real light coat. It would warm up the yellow a little bit, but at least we'd have that pearl effect right. without being so orange. I don't want that much orange. Chip has been using BASF's Diamond line of paint for a lot of years and knows the toners well enough to mix and match for the colors that he wants. I like this color here though. Ooh, yeah. Mixing custom paint isn't just a matter of getting colors you like, but getting colors that all work together. The DBC wire will go over that silver pretty quick. Yeah. Over that gray. Yeah. Why don't we do that then? I think that's going to be our best bet. Just over thin it. So don't get a whole lot of millage on it, but mm -hmm. it's gonna save us a big old edge. Let's do that. You better plan. Yeah, I'm just checking the color against the gray. I like that contrast. I like that. I was gonna darken it up a little bit. Is there a little blue in there? No, maroon. So it stays in the red family still. Keep it over the purple. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Kind of some old school colors. I yeah. dig it. Bright, warm colors are also very transparent. This layer of white will reduce the number of coats needed. When you're spraying a car, there can be a lot of distractions. Just keep your focus and try to ignore what's going on around you. With the white down, the yellow cover is quick and easy. We're only using two coats. That means less of an edge for the clear to have to bury. The reason I took the yellow and ran it down a lot further is because it'll make it a lot easier to lay down the red later. So you always gotta think ahead in custom paint. What I'm doing right now is I'm recreating all the tape lines that were originally put on the car when it was all gray. What we did then was masked off what was to stay gray, pulled everything up so we could spray the yellow, 
Now I'm masking off what's gonna be yellow. Once that's finished, we'll spray a little bit of red on the quarters, we'll lay out the red graphic. Then we can paint the whole car black, get it all unmasked, make sure it's clean, then we can clear coat it. What I'm doing right now is actually almost unnecessary because it's gonna be covered by the wing. But we don't have the wing in base coat yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay out the graphics as if there wasn't gonna be a wing on this. It'll look better if we ever take the wing off. You know, just, it'll show that the quality of the paint job is, is really there. But the wing's actually gonna cover all of this part of the graphic. It comes out to about the center of the deck lid here, and then the graphics are gonna roll up on top of that wing as well and tie all back in. I gotta say, this is one of my favorite parts of doing a car. It's, uh, you know, first you've got a mental image in your head of what you want it to look like. I've done the drawing, and now actually laying the graphics out on the car. But it's not until it's all finished, color sand, rub, pinstripe, you got the wheels and tires on it, and the car's sitting at the right stance. That's when you really get to uh, step back and enjoy that sense of accomplishment. With the yellow stripes laid out, it's time for the red. I'm laying down a wider section than needed to give Chip more room to lay out his design. I'm keeping the gun at an angle to the panel to reduce the buildup on the tape edge. Next, Chip follows up with more tape to cover where the red stripe will be before the final color goes on. It's time to tag team this pony to lay down the black. Now I gotta say, sharing the booth and spraying such a high profile car alongside Chip, well, that was the highlight of this project for me. After letting it dry for about a half hour, it's time to reveal the Mustang's new look. The graphics are almost done, but it's just not the Magnaflow Mustang without one final detail. After a good cleaning, it's time to tag team it one more time to bury all that work under four coats of BASF's 5300 clear. After the break, check out the awesome transformation as phase one of our Mustang build is buttoned up. Now the plastic lenses have been sanded with thousand grit. What we're getting ready to do here is we're gonna put a darker candy over the top of it, which is gonna bite right into it. And then we're gonna put a satin clear over top of that. It's gonna look very cool. I know it seems like a lot of work for such a subtle change, but the details make all the difference. Every lens on the car is being treated to a flat clear, minus the tint for the headlights and fog lights. Well, this is a pretty cool Ford, but we're about to make it a little cooler. Now, this is a production wheel by MHT. It's a Foose Legend wheel. It's a powder-coated gray finish, which we got real lucky. It actually matches the gray on the Mustang, and then it's got a machine lip finish. But before the Mustang is totally finished, we're gonna add a red pinstripe around the edge, and we're gonna back it up with some bare brakes. It's finally time to hang some parts and see Chip's vision become reality. Back in my younger days, really the only thing I used mothers for was their detailing products, so it was really good stuff. 
but now with their professional line, literally from color sanding to the time you pull in through the gates of the car show, it's mothers all the way, man. You can't argue with that, look at it. Take one rendering, three car guys, 72 hours, and one brand new 2010 Mustang. Mix them all together and what do you get? Muscle Cars MagnaFlow Mustang. Now it looks pretty close to the rendering, but believe it or not, it's only about 90% there. Hey, first of all, I want to thank you guys. I've had a great time here at Muscle Car, but we've got a list of companies that we've got to thank for this project. First of all, MagnaFlow for having the vision, Ford for ponying up with the new Mustang, Roush for giving us the cool body kit, Pirelli for giving us the tires to wrap up those MHT Foos 20 inch wheels. We got BASF who gave us all the paint. And of course we detailed that with the mother's products. And of course the car sounds so good with the MagnaFlow exhaust system. I still think it could have a little better stance. Yeah, we're nowhere near done with this thing. We still got to throw some pinstripe at it, hook up the suspension and throw some performance upgrades at it. Well, I'll tell you Chip, in between working on the car and everything else we've had going, I did a little something for you. It's a little clot. If you notice, did, did a little flake and a little fade and some pinstriping on it for you. But if you notice, there's, there's no, no numbers. There's no number. <laughs> there's a reason for that. After working with you for the last three days, I've come to the realization you have no concept of the passage of time, dude. You're an animal. I know the deadline. We got to get it done. That's all you focus on, the deadline. <laughs> so there you have a clock thank with no so numbers. Yeah. Thank you for coming out, man. I it's really been appreciate an honor, it. man. It's been an honor. I also want to thank Robert from MagnaFlow for all the help he's given us, too. Yeah. Absolutely. He's a good dude. Right on. Beer's on me. Let's get out of here. Sweet. Let's go.